so I don't have my voice but the show has to keep going because last week I promised you guys that I will bring you an update on the Ugandan election so that's the only story that I will be able to talk about today if I don't do anything then you guys will be worried like ah oh, what happens I'm just a little sick I'm not dying so <laughs> I will be fine. So last week, three African countries had their elections, Niger, Central African Republic, and of course, Uganda. Now of the three, the drama was in Uganda. I was so disappointed. That election is far from free and fair, just like the East is from the West. Soldiers and heavily armed policemen were everywhere to intimidate voters. Social media was banned that day in Uganda. How ridiculous. I'm so glad that Ugandans found a way around that. Ballot papers were six hours, seven hours late in several polling stations. And when people protested, soldiers shot tear gas at them. Some people even came at five who have not voted, okay? No ballot papers, okay? This is Kampara. Just three miles from the commission headquarters. <laughs> It was late before so many people could vote. In short, this video rightfully depicts the election that happened in Uganda. At which he won 14 gold medals. Yeah, I know. As ridiculous as that is, that's exactly what happened. And you know what baffles me the most is the boldness and the ease with which Museveni manipulated the whole thing. First of all, the main opposition candidate, Kisa Bezije, was arrested four times during the election week. No, no. Is this man under arrest? We just want to know. Please don't stop for me. I just take the information. Can you please say if he's under arrest? Four times. There were eight candidates running. Why was he tormenting this man so much? And do you know that this is the fourth election that the man would run against Museveni? So the man has been running against Museveni for the past 12 years. He used to be his medical doctor and then his biggest critic, accusing Museveni of corruption. A little more than a decade ago, Kiza Besije was fondly called the Hammer by many of his supporters. Uganda leading opposition figure and the nickname after he traversed the country on the campaign trail in 2001. He ran against Museveni in 2001 and he lost. After that, his movement was being monitored by Museveni, so he sought asylum in South Africa. And then he went back to Uganda in 2005 and ran again in 2006. Days after his arrival for the 2006 election, he was arrested and detained. He was charged with rape. They said he raped some lady in 1997. This was in 2005. When they got to court, all the witnesses their stories did not match each other so the judge dismissed the case so while others were campaigning at that time he was detained they released him before the election but he barely had time to campaign he tried again in 2011 security guards would show up and they would shoot tear gas at his rallies they even shot some of his supporters and then this was one of those instances where the man was arrested it looks more like a movie scene than real life as police, together with plainclothes security operatives, smashed the windows of Besje's car, liquid tear gas in huge amounts was then sprayed inside the car. <laughs> you will think they were arresting a terrorist, no be so. Besje was bundled into a waiting police pickup truck and whisked off to an unknown destination. <laughs> There was even a time that they told his vehicle. I'm like, you have to tow his, I, like really the vehicle, is the vehicle also campaigning against Museveni? I don't know. So this year, 2016, was his fourth time of trying. And even after the election, Museveni put the man on the house arrest. Now what I don't understand is what goes on in the minds of the soldiers and heavily armed policemen that Museveni sends each time to arrest this man. Like, do they ever think about the fact that this man may actually become president someday 
And when he becomes president, he may deal with us. Like, really? I'm sure he knows their faces by now. All these top officers that have been harassing him for the past 12 years, I'm sure they know what they're doing is not right. Those are army officers and police officers. I can imagine that they also don't want change. 30 years, and it's not as if the man is doing well. And it's so clear that Museveni is not ready to leave office anytime soon. Are there any plans of changing the term limits we don't for presidents? We don't believe in term limits. When you say we, what, who do you mean we? We in the NRA, NRA our party. What about the people of Uganda? Oh, they voted on it. They have voted for me. Did you hear that? We don't believe in term limits. Whoa, whoa. The people uh, who talk of term limits, we don't agree with them. We think they are not really addressing the real issue. The real issues in Africa are not who, they are what. The real issue is not who but what. Like, does that even make sense? If the who is corrupt and power hungry, what else can you focus on? Talk about time limits, about who will sit on this chair. Why don't you talk about the future of Africa? But that is part of it. People talk about their leaders, and some people think that their leaders shouldn't be there, like, forever. So that's part of the discussion. If you East don't Africans want them to be have. there forever, you vote them out. But how do you vote them out when they keep rigging the election? Eh? It's not as if people are not voting. The way I see it, we Africans, we fought so long to be liberated from colonization, only for us to not be colonizing ourselves. So many African countries now, their leaders have refused to leave. As for now, Museveni is again the re-elected president of Uganda for the fifth time. I hear that he's not planning on eradicating time limits completely in the Ugandan constitution. Keep in mind, his wife supports all the things that he's been doing. I don't see her speaking out, even though herself knows this is not right. But you guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.